Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy Friday, coming at you with 2019 Bowman Chrome Baseball. Uh, Pick your team number seven, which filled after eight. So if you're looking at our video list, you'll see eight first, and then you'll see seven. Break credit still stands. You gotta buy at least two teams, and you'll be randomized for break credit. That's just a reminder for me. <laughs> There it is on Friday. Thanks for spending a bit of your Friday with us, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why Jacob's name has a different font to it, but Diane, last bought mojo. Might have to fix that or else or else the O C D will get me. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fix that. It's not right. Sorry, trees. Anyway, while that's printing out, we can pop this open. can't see the let's get the top cam going up there and up there so there's three boxes right here three boxes right there three boxes right there and another three right here to make 12 there's a silver pack promo happening sometime at your local car shop maybe we could be yours for most of beach california there we go we're all good here we are all good here another look at the list all right, good luck, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me, here we go. All right, so uh, the Braves celebrating their victory. They beat the Giants. They shot out the Giants, I think. They're, they uh, beat the Giants 6 nothing to take the NL East. That's what happened on... Thursday, September 20th, 2019, if you're watching this video at a later date. Um, Pete Alonzo has become the second rookie to hit 50 home runs. Aaron Judge is the other guy. He's trying to chase Aaron Judge. He needs to hit two to tie, three more to break the record. He's got maybe a handful of games left, not too many games left. Are there other, other, any other relevant games happening here? Cleveland beat the Phillies 5-2. to two. What are the Twins doing? Twins are leading the Royals 4-1. to one. What about the Rays? Rays are tied with Boston 4-4 in the uh, top of the 10th. All right. Let's see what unfolds there. Cubs lost to the Cardinals. What are the Brewers doing? Brewers are beating the uh, Pirates 6-1. to one. Mets trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. They won 8-1. to one. Chad, Sylvia, Red Sox. Yeah, I, actually, that was a question I was going to ask everybody as we start this kind of a longer break. So we've got some time to talk out some some things. What's the most most disappointing baseball team this season? There's Kyle Muller. Most disappointing or disappointing baseball teams, I guess. Maybe not most. So you can comment on that too but the disappointing baseball teams there's Seth Beard 499 Red Sox yeah Chad's right Red Sox definitely disappointing coming off a of World Series beating my Dodgers you know I was just like what that's the team we lost to that's where that's where my position's at you know 
This is for the Strohs, Dan Gardner. If the Red Sox were crushing this season, I'd be like, all right, all right. The Dodgers lost to a worthy opponent. You know what I mean? What are you going to do? You know, they're, they're good. But now I look at them this season, they're like, we lost to those guys? There's Sam to 250, Sam Henkes. That's for the tribe. There's Robinson Cano to 499. And there's Jeffrey Del Rosario for the Royals. That's going to go to SKS. Chad's also saying Rockies were a little disappointing this season. I could see that. I think there was a lot of a lot of uh, preseason chatter about, hey, Rockies got that offense. They got some people locked up money wise, you know. I think there was definitely some chatter about the Rockies potentially challenging the Dodgers for the uh, the NL West. So yeah, the Rockies could be considered a little disappointing. Anyone else have any thoughts? Disappointing baseball teams. Teams that you thought would just do better and just didn't. Brett, what's going on, Big Rig? No, have not pulled a one of one. We've pulled, I think, a couple out of fives, those red out of fives. In fact, the last break, we had a red out of five. Um, but, uh, but no, no one of one, and cer certainly no autographed one of one. Still searching. Maybe it's in this case. Maybe this is the one. So yeah, I would say I look at the AL East. Yeah, Red Sox clearly the the uninspiring team there. The Indians. I mean, it's hard to say that about a 91 win team, right? They've got 91 wins right now, but I thought they'd have like. I thought they'd be where the Twins are. They, I thought they'd, be, they'd have 94, 95, 96 wins at this point of the season. That, that, the Cleveland team seems a little disappointing to me. The Kluber injury didn't help. That comebacker that broke his forearm didn't help. But... AL West, or what about the AL West... You know, Mariners are kind of disappointing. You could even argue the Angels or the Rangers, we knew that they were kind of re in, in a rebuild phase. And we'll talk about teams that surprised us. Um, I thought the Angels would be a little bit better. I think the, the Skaggs thing and some other, you know, that definitely screwed things up and blah, blah, blah. But um, Seattle... I thought would have won more ball games. I thought they would have been a better team. Uh, no, Jacob Hanks. Who was the last 40-40 guy? I know someone had mentioned... Oh, I'm scrolling. I see it now. Jacob Hanks has got us. We are talking 40-40 because Acuna is a few stolen bases away but from being a 40-40 player. So Alfonso Soriano. If someone, yeah, if someone finally looked it up for me. Jacob, thank you. I have been asking for it the last two nights. Alfonso Soriano was the last guy to hit go 40-40 in 2008. Thank you, Jacob. I appreciate that. I think he's also the last guy um, that got closest to 50-50. In fact, maybe that 2008-40-40 season may have even fallen short of being a 50-50 season. Jacob, look that up. <laughs> 43 out of 99, Ryan Rollison. We got Francisco Morales for the Phillies, Darren McKenzie. Yeah, Jack saying it was with the Nats, right? I think that was like, he only had one season with the Nationals and he did that, I think. Logan Gilbert. And Zach Brownban for Lou and the Brew Crew.
I don't think Trout has ever gotten close. I think any of his like 40 home run seasons, he's only had like 28 stolen bases or something like that. They don't really have him sealed too much anymore. Yeah, Jacob's right. Yeah, I think early in his career, but he doesn't seal very much anymore. No one's had a 50-50 season. Soriano is the guy that got the closest, that I know. Which is, he's kind of had an odd career. What is Alfonso Soriano's legacy? He sort of, like, bounced around a lot and had some monster years, but no one wanted it. Maybe his defense was bad, but why not stick him as a DA? I don't know. It was kind of a weird... A weird career arc for Alfonso Soriano. Disappointing teams in the a NL East. Philadelphia. Definitely disappointing, right? They land the big fish with Bryce Harper. They add JT Real Muto. You know what I mean? They got Aaron Nola at the front of that rotation. They got Jake Arrieta. They got a lot of youngsters surrounding that, you know, surrounding JT Real Muto and surrounding Bryce Harper. But they're 78 and 74 right now. A little over 500. I don't think that's the season the Phillies wanted or the fans. I mean, I think they're going to be good going forward, but this season definitely disappointing. Yeah, you, you, NL, NL Central, that race has been so tight, it's kind of hard to say that that it's a tough, it, that, that there were a disappointing team in that division. But as Don was saying, Pirates went into the All-Star break like a team on a mission. And the mission was not to lose a lot of, lose a lot post-All-Star break, but they did. Josh Bell cooled off a little bit, maybe. I guess you could argue that the Pirates are a disappointing team merely because they, they changed our they changed the narrative a little bit. You know, they they changed the, the line in the sand. They were started they started to look good. And now you're like, ah, oh, that's kinda of disappointing that they didn't keep it up. It could have been a five team race for that division. And there's Edwin Yusita for the Dodgers. Jacob Hanks with my boys in blue. What's up, Vince? Yeah, it's too bad Trout and Yelich got injured. I'd, I would have liked to see how that, how the rest of the September would have played out for those guys. There's Khalil Lee. Those aren't numbered, by the way, the purple shimmers. Sorry, the camera's tired, looks like. We'll save one of those Vlad Guerrero Juniors, too. And there's our other autograph. That's Brandon Bilek. That is for Dan Gardner and the Strohs. And NL West, disappointing team, the NL West. Yeah, it was, we, Chad and I were discussing earlier, Colorado. I mean, they're... They, they have 66 wins. They're on the they're in the cellar. NLS cellar. Padres have three more wins than the Rockies. Definitely thought the, thought the Rockies would be would be competing with the Dodgers, chasing the Dodgers for that NL West. Of a, a weird season for them. Just, things just didn't click. Surprising teams. What about like, what what are your surprising teams? Even if they're bad teams that weren't as bad as you as the as their record may reflect. What teams jump out to you? Diamondbacks. They have seventy eight wins. They played better baseball. Giants played better baseball than they thought they would. The NL Central, I guess, and I guess everyone does this, I think. I think I underrated the, the Cardinals a little bit. Um, but I think the Reds played better baseball than their record reflects. Uh, 
Oh, tons of good stuff you missed. I'm pulling hits left and right. In the NL East, is there a disappointing team or a, a team that surprised you in the NL East? No, I guess all the teams I think kind of did what I thought they thought they would this season, you know. Oh man, so many things, Mad C. Thankfully, we upload all the videos of our breaks, and you can watch all those videos to see all the great things. Train whistles, left and right, hot prospect autographs, vet autos, cool jerseys that we pulled. There's Josh Hader the, to 50. And there's Melvin Adan for the Giants. That goes to Patrick Sweeney and the Giants. Mackenzie Gore to 499. Giancarlo Stanton's back in action to 250. And Zach Brownman, purple chrome autograph to 250. Lou with the Brew Crew. Aaron Pettit saying. Mets could be great for next year. Yeah, the Mets definitely looked better than I thought they'd be. I mean, there was so much kind of weird drama there, right? Brody Van Wagenen, and coaching staff, and firing the pitching coach, and got the old pitching coach there. But then, just kind of quietly, you know... Pitching really short up, so I guess that pitching coach change did help. Pitching really short up. Pete Alonzo has been great. I, I just hope he can do it again next year. And just really solidify himself as, as like the next future star for the Mets. Jeff McNeil could win a... Is he, is he still in line for a batting... He can win the NL batting title. He's up there. You know, so they've got a steady hitter there. You know, if they could get anything out of, um, if, if, if there's any, if they can get anything out of Cano going forward. And um, why am I blanking on the, oh, and Ioannis Cespedes, who like destroyed his ankles on his farm, right, on his ranch. So. I'm the first person to say your username correctly. The Mad C, is that what I said? What do other people say? How else would they say it? There's only one way to say it. The Mad C 2004. Or M Mad D, uh, maybe, are they say Mad DC? Mad DC? Next box, Francisco Morales to 250. Kevin Biggio, Atomic to 150. Buster Posey to 499. Oh, they reversed this. Well, they don't know how to read then. They say the MACD, 2004. <laughs> No, it's clearly the, the it's mad. People just need to need to read. Mad C. It helps in life. David Cruz, what's going on? Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a little bit. That's for the tribe. That'll go to Brad Bridges. Sam Hentkes. Hentges. I don't know how to do that name. Mad C, I got. That guy's last name, I don't, I don't got that one. Out of 150, Reese Hoskins. And 
And we got Christian Javier, 48 out of 150 for the Strohs, Dan Gardner. All right. Next one. Seth, what's going on? What about uh, any, anyone else for, for surprising teams? Maybe teams that their, their records may not look impressive, but you think they could make some noise next year? I don't really see anyone in the AL West. Oakland's already, always do Oakland things. Rangers were a little surprising. I thought Rangers were going to be where, like, the... Where, where the Angels or Mariners were with 60 some odd wins. No, they got, they're 74 and 7. They're almost finishing 500. Rangers are a little surprising. That's got to be encouraging for Rangers fans. Maybe the rebuild won't be as long as they thought. You know, maybe they move into the new stadium soon. Should be interesting. Maybe. I think, could the White Sox, like, sort of. Revival start soon? Could that start next year? Giolito look good this season. You know, Eloy Jimenez could really break out. I mean, he had a, he had a grand slam today. He had 29 home runs. I mean, I guess he has broken out. You know, Eloy Jimenez could break out even more. I think they got some guys out there. I think that 67-86 record is... Uh, doesn't really reflect the kind of talent that they have. Yeah, Seth's saying White Sox got a lot of talent. Mad C saying Cubs, unfortunately, choking has begun. Brewers are on fire, though, even, with, even without Yelich. Going to the uh, White Sox depth chart right now. I mean, you've got Jose Abreu. I, I, I even like Yolmer Sanchez, uh, Tim Anderson, Yoan Moncada, Eloy Jimenez, Lurie Garcia. I mean, maybe the pitching might need a little bit of work. Maybe healthy Giolito. We got a couple. Who's on the um, Kopech, right? Michael Kopech still around, right? The Kopech there. I mean, Carson get Carson Fulmer back. There's Gilliam, 499. You know, they can rebuild that rotation. There's Rowdy Tellez. And then next thing you know, there's John Duplantier, 25. Chad Wright with the Diamondbacks. And there's Braylon Marquez for the Cubbies. EA with the Cubs. So um, I feel like the White Sox could 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 break out there. Gareth Miller saying James Shields, who we traded to this year, yeah, but but you guys you guys fleeced the Cubs on that Eloy Jimenez deal. You think you think the Cubs want Eloy Jimenez right now or Jose Quintana right now? I know we saw that. Three more, and he could beat uh, he could beat Aaron Judge's record. And nice, another Cub, Braylon Marquez. This time, orange Cubs box. Nine out of twenty-five. Alright, we are halfway through this break, folks. Got about another 
oh, 25, 30 minutes or so to go. Thanks for hanging with us. Next break after this is going to be uh, XR Football. This is this is currently Chrome 7, Chrome Hobby 7, Bowman Chrome Hobby. Pick your team 7 from jazbeescasebreaks.com. After this will be XR Football. And then um, well, I think we'll have time for a couple, one more longer sort of break or a couple shorter breaks. After that, we'll be down to the last hour of the broadcast. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you got. I have to get the uh, get the World Series. I get it. Bob Wessel says Cubs suck either way you look at it. What what teams have the longest World Series victory drought right now? I know that my Dodgers, thirty plus years now. I think Indians are the, the the most right now, right? Fifty something since like the fifties, mid fifties maybe. Out of four ninety nine, Spencer Howard. Yeah, when's the last time Orioles won a World Series? 70s? Brooks Robinson's year, years? Era? 60s, 70s? Speaking of the Orioles, there's DJ Stewart to 150. Brewers haven't, oh, Brewers haven't won a World Series. Indians haven't won one since 48. Says Mad C. There's Alexander Canario. For Patrick Sweeney. Tim Tebow, Purple Shimmer. For the Mets. That'll have some value, believe it or not. It goes to Jacob Hanks. And there's Cole Irvin. Cole Irvin for the Phillies. That's going to be for DMAC and the Fighting Phils. Joe Kroll. Joe Kroll's asking who wants to do five star or premier hockey. We can do. We have time for both. We'll be down to the last hour of the broadcast after uh, after this, and then after XR. Then we'll have about an hour left in the show. And those and uh, premier hockey and five star are relatively. Are pretty short breaks. We can squeeze both of those in before we call it a night. And then we're back tomorrow, folks. Seven nights a week, actually. So anything we don't finish one night, we'll, we'll always get to the next night. Nice. You're welcome. That yeah, was a good break. Very good break. Good randomizer, good break. All right, we've got Tony Santolin to 99. Um, how much was the buy-in? What for for Bowman Chrome? This was a pick your team. 
So the buy-in prices were different depending on the team. There's Isaiah Gilliam for the Yankees, Junior, with the Bronx Bombers. Here and pick your team seven, which filled after eight. Jared Kalanick to 150. There's David Peralta to 499. Connor Pilkington, Purple Shimmer, and Miguel Geraldo for the Blue Jays. EA with the Blue Jays. Um, I don't know how much the Cubs were. 50, 60 bucks? Sounds about right. 40, 50 bucks? I don't know, I can check after the break. Or there might be another one posted already on the website. No, not yet. All right, almost done, folks. Four boxes to go. And a quick little break, and then XR. And then after XR, I don't know what we're going to do after that, but I think we're, we're all trying to figure it out. Yeah, maybe the Cubs are seven hundred dollars. I have no idea. I'll, I'll, I'll look after this break, or if someone remembers. Alrighty then, next box, Taylor Trammell, Reds, Purple Shimmer. Victor Robles to 250, Nats. And Robinson Ortiz, Dodgers, Jacob Hanks. To four ninety nine. And there's Blaine and Knight. Ooh, Rays walked it off. Blaine Knight for Edwin Hack and the Orioles. So nothing changes, right? Because the Indians won today too. Yeah, Indians beat the Phillies five to two. The Twins are winning, and the Rays just won. Matt, so besides the fifty auto book card that we pulled, what's your best pull ever, man? I should have some good stock answers for this. That's a that's a super common question. Um, man, we've been doing this for five years, seven nights a week for five years, so it's hard to really distill it down to like 
the 50 signature book, that's obviously one of the most unique things. That's always going to stand out in my mind. But, I mean, you name it, we've pulled it. Except for Zion. <laughs> we haven't pulled him yet, but, you know, baseball. You want Jackie Robinson relics. Joe DiMaggio bat barrels. Yeah, we've pulled it. Chris Bryant, one of ones. Carlos Rodon super fractors in draft. Bowman draft. You know what I mean? We've pulled Shoei Otani's. We've pulled... Todd Gurley, one of ones from football. We've pulled Connor McDavid RPAs out of the cup. We've pulled, you know, I, I mean, Luka Doncic autographs, Luka Doncic RPAs, you know. I've I've pulled cards that have been graded pristine. People may people mail mail it in, they get it back, and they're like, hey, it's pristine. Thanks, Joe. All the time. You know, hockey, the soccer, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, Pele autographs, Mike Trout autos, everything. There's Parker Meadows, 99. Um, what, grading, Mad C? People have been doing that for a long time, not just lately. Grading's been around for a while. Joe DiMaggio autograph baseball, right? Michael Jordan rookie cards. Got him. You know, we've been, we've been fortunate to do a lot of group breaks and see a lot of cool stuff. Hasn't gotten old yet, though. The value of that 50 signature book? Well, thanks, Alan, for finding us. Um, $75,000 is what I say. There's Newton right here to 150. Gabe's asking Joe, do you think this is a defining moment for Jazzy that close to you? Um, well, thank you, Gilo. Yeah, I think... I, no, I don't think there is is there has been a defining moment for us. I think it's just being consistent. <laughs> this guy's last name is Jelly. There you go, Sean Jelly. <laughs> it says right there. That goes to the Giants, Patrick Sweeney. But I don't think there was like a, a defining moment per se. Um, I think just being consistent has been a, a thing, a, a strong suit for us. So, because we don't see like a, in our like numbers anyway, there wasn't like a oh. We did that, and then all of a sudden, you know, profit, like bananas, you know? <laughs> it wasn't like that. It was just every day we just do, you know, every day is just like get a new customer. Get a new collector to join. Introduce someone new to the hobby. You know, keep doing, keep doing these breaks. Eventually someone will find us. Get more people to subscribe to the YouTube channel, which everyone should, you know? Maybe that, that makes us more recommended viewers and other people stumble upon us. And we, then we break a little bit more this week. And we break a little bit more next week. And we break a little bit more the next week. And, you know, we try to put on a good show. Good, good family show. Tongue in cheek, but good family show. Try to, try to offer some good customer service. Things go wrong, we try to fix it. Things are going to go wrong. We're human. Things go wrong. I'm not going to lie to you guys and say we're perfect. Things go wrong. We fix it. But you can trust us to get it right at the end of the day. It might take some time, but at the end of the day, we'll get it right. You know? So, uh, refresh, Ryan Redman. I think everything... I'm seeing the stream just fine. Is everyone else seeing the stream okay? It's a Ryan problem? No, this is a Ryan problem.
Oh, is the camera on the top off? Like off? No, it's up there. There it is. We have a camera up here. Yeah, it's there. Is something reflecting? Something must be reflecting on there. Does it seem a little weird? What's going on there? I'm not sure what's happening there. Anyway, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's just you, G Lo saying it's a steady, what, 50 viewers a night now, you know? Yeah. A year ago, it was 20 or 30 when you were when you first started hanging out with us. Then maybe next year it'll be, you know, 60, 70, 100. And we just keep building from there. I think consistency is it. That's all. You know, and we're, we're not trying to, we try to make sure everyone's kind of understands the process of these group breaks and not overspend. You know the old saying that car salesmen sell you that I don't want to sell you, you know, one super expensive car. I want to sell you a reasonable car, and then your wife a car, and then your brother a car, your sister a car. I want to sell your kids a car. I want to sell, like, that's what it is. We want that's kind of what we want to do, and it's just a lot more fun if there's a consistent group of people here because it feels more like a, a community, as opposed to just random people just throwing money at someone to open up boxes of cards, and that just gets weird. Jacob Hanks says, I'll say this, you found your guys and the price and the hits stands out than the rest? I don't like that, Jacob Hanks. Jacob Hanks, are you suggesting that we're underpricing things? That's what I'm hearing. We gotta start raising some prices on the Braves, and the Dodgers, and the Mets, and the Nationals. Junior with the Yankees. That's what I heard from, that's the feedback I heard from Jacob Hanks. Your prices are really good. You're saying you would have paid more? Thanks, Jake. Jacob Hanks looking out for Jaspi's case breaks profits. I appreciate that. Checks in the mail. We'll get you in on the business. Raise prices. Jacob Hanks salary. I don't know. That's what I heard, Jacob Hanks. Your prices stand out above the rest. At <laughs> a 250, Bryce Wilson. So I'm hearing, let's raise some prices. That's what I'm hearing. Raise prices, Joe. Too good. All right, that's for the Blue Jays. All right, last box. We made it. And then we'll give away a little bit of money, too. Yeah, Ryan, try it. Redmond, try refreshing. It looks like hockey and five stars are going to sell. We can do both in the last hour of the broadcast. Oh, did someone ask about NT? Lane? It's next Wednesday. It's on the. Uh, it's in the title of the first break. FYI. Prices are great, says Obi Wan. That tells me the prices are too low. I start raising prices. Uh, we don't have any uh, random team Bowman Chrome at the moment, Chip. No, no worries, Logan. No, and I, 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 we actually have not been asked too many times. <laughs> yeah, Obi Wan's like easy, dude. Come on now. Come on, Joe. Next Jaspi, next Jaspi meeting, guys. I'm hearing a lot of feedback about how how our prices are just way too good, 
too low. He's beating the rest in prices. <laughs> right, Chad. There you go, Chad. That's what you're supposed to do. Man, if it wasn't for you, Joe, we wouldn't pay these exorbitant prices anywhere. <laughs> if it wasn't for the great customer service at Jaspi's, man, we'd be out of here. There's Juan Soto to 499. And there's Jake Cave to 499. <laughs> Big Rig says thank you to whomever bought the Royals and Five Star on jazbeescasebreaks.com. My index finger was getting itchy, was about to pull the trigger, but didn't want the repercussion from the wife. So cheers. Yeah, maybe they saved you some money, Brett. That could be a possibility too. Gilo gave another Royals fan almost bought the Royals too. Now we'll, we'll we'll see if the Royals owner saved you money or make you regret. There's Corey Ray, Purple Shimmer, Chance Adams to 99. Chip that NT doesn't come out until next Wednesday. If you're talking about NT baseball random number block break. So we couldn't do it tonight. Be happy to feel free to buy five spots though. That'll help move it along. And there's Wencel Perez, Tigers. Jake Cave goes to the Twins. Matt Gomes with the Twins at the very end there. Tigers, Dennis Genders on the board as well. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's all good, it's all good Chip. Yeah, that drops next Wednesday, folks. NT Baseball, but I'm pretty excited about it. Okay, money. That's what I want. I want money. Make the Beatles song. The best things in life are free. All right. But you can give them to the birds and bees. I want money. If you bought at least two teams, you get one entry in the break credit promo. Darren, Dennis J, EA, Jacob got four, so he'll get two entries. Shot at money. John Gonzalez. Josh. Justin. SKS. All right, that's, these are pretty good odds. That's a one in six chance for 100 bucks of break credit. It's not too shabby. Let's roll it. Let's randomize it. Eight times, name on top gets 100 bucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. Josh Proust, $100 of break credit. I don't think I called your name all break, Josh. So there you go, man. 100 bucks of break credit to make up for it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on jazbeescasebreaks.com. Bye-bye.